Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to start with the first techniques of solving systems of equations. Now, in the previous two lessons, we have laid the foundation, right? We know what arrays are, and they are matrices and vectors. We know how to uh, call them from the Excel sheet. We know how to display them on the Excel sheet. You know, we know how to manipulate matrices, right? We know how to add them or subtract them. We know how to uh, multiply them, and we know how to tra transpose them. So now that we have all this uh, foundation, Foundation. Now let's actually start with the objective of this part, which is solving systems of equations. And what 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 is what is meant by solving a system of equation? Well, it's meant that I have three, say three equation, or it can range from two to ten to twenty equations. But we're gonna start with just a simple three equation system. So what solving them does is we're trying to find the common x1 x2 and x3 for each one of those um, equations that if I plug them in here would give me negative 3 for this one. If I plug the x1 here, 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 the same x1, x2, and x3 for the first one, I would get a 2 here. And um, same x1, x1, x3, if I plug it in this one, I would get a 1 here. So this is basically the common point where all of these three equations intersect. You know, and this is used in real life. And when you have three systems that you want to network together, you want to find the point that all of them can operate in unison. And this is basically why solving systems of equations is very important because each one of these, um, each one of these uh, units is going to be defined in terms of an equation. And you're trying to find what are the parameters in this case, x1, x2, and x3 that would make them work in unison. Okay. Now, the first technique that we're going to work with is what is called Gus elimination. And Gus elimination is has two processes that are involved in it. Basically, we forward eliminate, and I'm going to explain what that is. And what the forward elimination does, it creates those three zeros on the uh, bottom left-hand side. And the reason it does that, because we're going to go through the second type of process and it's called backward substitution and we're going to get basically x3 x2 and x1 and this is why it's called backward right so instead of getting x1 x2 x3 in this order we're going backward we're getting x3 x2 x1 so this is kind of a brief outline of what this lesson is going to entail we're going to go through forward elimination creating how to create those bottom three zeros and then how to go through a backwards substitution, which getting x3, x2, and x1, which are the solutions that we're after. Now, with forward elimination, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to create this zero, and then we're going to create this zero, and then we're going to create this zero. And it's very, very simple. So say, for instance, this is the row I have. And what I've done here, this is what is called an augmented matrix, which is basically it's made up of the coefficients of all the things here. So on the right hand side, I have one, one and negative one, which I have here. This I have six, two and two, six, two and two. And here I have negative three, four and one. And you can see the right hand side is negative three, two and two, right? So I'm going to take this augmenting matrix and I'm going to create this first zero here. So let's see how this is done. Well, the first thing that you do is you take the uh, equation here that you want to create the zero in. And this is the first one that I have. And I'm going to put it on the top here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract it from the first equation here, but I'm going to subtract it from the first equation here, multiplied what is called the factor. And the factor for this one is going to be 6, which is a, um, that's going to be a uh, 2, 1 divided by a 1, 1. So it's going to be 6 divided by 1, which is going to be equal to 6. So if I'm eliminating this 0, so I'm trying to create this 0, we're going to be doing 6 divided by 1. And that's going to become clear as we're developing all of the zeros. So the pattern, you're going to see the pattern. So I have taken the equation that I want to create the first zero in, and I put it on the side on the top here, subtracted it from the first equation, multiplied by the factor, which is basically six divided by one. So let's look at this. It's going to be uh, six minus, and this is going to be six x one. So we got rid. So this is how you're eliminating 
um, terms. So this is now we are we eliminated x1. So that's going to be uh, 2 minus, right, uh, 6, this multiplied by 6, so it's going to be negative 4. And this is a 2, and this is minus minus 6, which is 8, and this is 2 minus minus 18, which is 20. So now this is how this negative 4, 8, and uh, 20 came about. So now we have eliminated this term. Now we have created this 0. The next thing is that I need to create this zero down here, which I have here. So like I said with this one, we take the equation that we want to eliminate uh, or create the zero in, which is the bottom here, and I put it here on the top. I'm going to subtract it from the first equation multiplied by the factor. So if the factor for the first one here was 6 divided by 1, this one is going to be negative 3 divided by 1. So it's going to be negative 3. So it's going to be negative 3 minus negative 3, so it's going to be negative 3 plus 3, so we got rid of this first term. So now here is going to be 4, 4 going to be minus minus 3, which you can see how this became a 7 here, and this one is going to be 1 uh, minus uh, 3, and this is going to be negative 2, and this is going to be 1 minus uh, 9, which you can see is negative 8. So here, 7, negative 2 and negative 8, like we got here 7, negative 2 and negative 8. So you can see we created those two zeros here, right? So the last zero I want to create is this zero down here, right? So the first thing that we do is we, we take the equation that we want to eliminate, which is this one, 7x2 minus 2x3 is equal to negative 8. And we're going to take this equation on top of it, and we're going to use it. So in the first two, we took the first equation as a means to subtract. And now we're going to take this equation, which is negative 4x2 plus 8x3 is equal to 20. And this equation, like we did with these two, we're going to multiply it by a factor. And in this case, it's going to be 7 divided by negative 4 right? So 7 divided by negative 4, and if you do the slight algebraic manipulations, you can see that we end up with 12x3 is equal to 27. Now, I want you to look at this equation. Now, this equation we can actually solve right away for x3, right? It's just 27 divided by 12, and this is the purpose of uh, systems of equation. We're trying to reduce it down to a form that we can actually um, get uh, what the x3, x2, and x1 are. Because if I take this equation on its own, it has three unknowns. So how am I supposed to find x1, x2, and x3? And this is three unknowns, three unknowns. But in terms of six, seven equations, I need to have equal numbers of equations as I have unknowns. So my unknowns here is x1, x2, x3. For me to find them, I need to have three equations. So three equations, three unknowns. Okay, so if you have four uh, unknowns but three equations, you cannot solve that system. Okay, so this is the resulting system that I have from forward elimination, those three zeros. So I'm going to place it down here, and I'm going to do what is called backward substitution. And backward substitution is very, very simple. So let's actually look at this uh, bottom row. Isn't this the coefficient of x1? Isn't that 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 12x3 is equal to 27, which is basically what we got down here? So this is, if we do 27 divided by 12, we have 2.25. So we got x3. So let's actually go to this uh, equation here. Isn't that 0x1 minus 4x2 plus 8x3? But we already got what x3 is, right? So we can plug it here. 2.25 and then we uh, do equal to the right hand side which is 2. And if we do some algebraic manipulation we can go ahead and uh, solve for x2 which is negative 0.5. And the first one is 1 times x1 uh, plus 1 times x2 minus 1 times x3 is equal to negative 3. But we already know what x3 and x2 are, so we can plug them in here. And the only unknown here is x1, so we can solve for it is now negative 0.25. So this is kind of the theory behind Gauss elimination. The first thing that we do is we do forward elimination, and again, we create this zero, then this zero, then this zero, and you saw how this process works with these um, three equations, or uh, three processes that we did here. And after we got it in the form that we have the bottom left-hand side as uh, having those three zeros, now we do backward substitution, 
getting x3, x2, x1, like I have explained here, okay, using code. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I will see you in the next lesson.